Hello, everyone. My guest today is Pippin Williamson. He's a nature-loving farm boy that somehow found his way into computers, internet, and business. He runs a company called Sandhills Development. They build e-commerce and membership software for websites. Pippin, you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. All right. So I'm looking forward to this. I found you on Indie Hackers, where I think you stated the revenue. I mean, you were doing somewhere between two and three million bucks, right? Yep. What 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 do you think you'll do here in 2020 with COVID? Well, so I can tell you our plans have changed a little bit. Uh, okay. We were originally estimating that we'd uh, break four million. Um, however, just announced last week, we actually sold one of our products, uh, which has caused our monthly revenue to fluctuate in the last couple of months. And so we're still trying to figure out exactly where we're going to be uh, since we no longer have the revenue from that product coming in. But last month, we did 311000 That's great. So tell us about that product. What product did you sell? Uh, we sold actually our membership platform. Uh, so we'll have to adjust our tagline just a little bit. <laughs> uh, so it was called Restrict Content Pro, and it was a WordPress membership plugin uh, that basically allowed site owners to sell memberships. So annual, monthly, daily, any kind of membership, any type of content that you wanted to lock away behind a membership. Interesting. So that's obviously a hot space. People, a lot of people believe today that community is sort of the new moat for any piece of software. Membership sites are a key piece of community. How much of the 311 that you did last month, 311,000 in revenue was from the membership tool? Uh, uh, for last month, zero, uh, because the sale actually went through before last month. But at the time that we sold it, it was doing about 50 to 55,000 a month. Okay, got it. So a, a good chunk, but not a majority of, of your monthly revenue. Correct. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so why did you decide to sell? It's doing fifty-five thousand bucks a month. I assume it's high margin. Why sell? Uh, it was doing uh, very high high margins. Uh, frankly, it wasn't something that we originally planned to sell, uh, but the opportunity arose, and we've always tried to approach business with a mentality that everything is you know has a possibility of being sold at some point. Um, and the right opportunity arose. And what we ultimately decided was that it allowed us to narrow our focus. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, we were running five different product brands, um, and there was a little bit of overlap between them, between the membership and e-commerce tools that we built. And so transferring one of them basically allowed us to narrow our focus, and we kept our whole team. So we didn't transfer any of our team members with the product, uh, only the product. So we effectively were able to hire three new people uh, without actually hiring anybody because we took mm -hmm. the people that were working on the product and have put them onto some of our other projects. The toughest part of any sale like that, obviously, is number one, finding a buyer that you think is going to treat your mm -hmm. customers right. And then secondly, seeing if the buyer will essentially pay you what you want to let the tool yep. go, right? So walk me through both of those. Uh, let's start with the harder one first, which is how do you think about valuation? Um, Valuation-wise, we... Uh, I mean, frankly, we had to look at it from a... The price had to be right for us uh, because it's like we mentioned earlier, it was a profitable product already. Uh, it is something that we had been running for a long time. We had been uh, running it for about eight years. Uh, we were very comfortable with it. We had a lot of long-term plans for it. And so if we're going to do it, the price had to be right. Um, so we basically came up with a valuation based off of annual revenue um, and estimated profits for the next few years uh, and basically told our buyer that this is what we need. And if we can meet there, uh, then we can make a deal. Where was your head at? I assume what you're about to tell me wasn't the actual price because there's probably some negotiation. But when you first sort of went into this, what was the sort of revenue multiple you guys were hoping for? Uh, we wanted somewhere in the two to three X annuals. And, and why did you come up with that? Like when you were sitting down with your team, what was that? Why was two to three X the number? Uh, number one, it was a number that I felt that I could reasonably get. Um, I thought it seemed fair from a buyer's perspective. You know, we can we can say that we would love to have 10x annual, but <laughs> you know, it's probably never going to happen. Yeah. Not, not not in any kind of reasonable negotiation. So we really wanted to try to find a balance between what do we need to justify this and what is somebody reasonably going to pay because they're going to try to regain their investment. Yep. Um, and in this case, we didn't sell it to a private equity firm or somebody that is more not just able, but maybe operates off of a business model of uh, larger gambles. Uh, we sold it to an, an, another team within the WordPress ecosystem. Uh, and so we had to make it make sense for them too. Mm -hmm. So, so d did you sort of end up in that two to three X range? We did. I can't say exactly where we got due to our contract, um, but it was uh, definitely in the range of what we wanted. 
Fair enough. And the, you know, there are a limited number of buyers in this space. I mean, did, was it public? Is the buyer going to, is it, have they made an announcement? Hey, we just bought this tool it, yet? It, yep. It is public. It all went live on September 1st. Uh, and so if anybody wants to check it out, you can go to sandhillsdev.com. Uh, we wrote a blog post there. Uh, and the buyer was iThemes, iThemes.com, which is a, one of the brands under the liquid web family. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. So that's done. Congratulations on that. You now have a little more cash to play with. So what do you do? You know, personally as an entrepreneur, that's a nice moment. Now you still have a business doing, it sounds like 250,000 ish per month without the 55,000 tool, right? Or is that 311? Okay. Uh, no, we did 311 without that membership. Without it. So you still have a tool that's doing 3.6 million a year in revenue. Now, is that 3.6 million in revenue? Is that more like consulting or is that a true SaaS project on the e-commerce side? So it's a combination of SaaS products and self-hosted products. So we run, we still run four separate um, product brands. Uh, and so that 311 is a combination of all four of those um, with the largest being uh, about 130 to 150,000 and the smallest being one to 2000 a month. This um, what's the largest, so one? All of all, can you name it? Like what's the website for? Uh, yep. Affiliate WP.com. And what does it do? The largest product. It is an affiliate marketing tool. So any, it's a, for membership or store owners, uh, anybody that's basically running an online e-commerce business of some kind, if they want to run their own uh, affiliate program and they want to own all of their data and maintain the tool themselves, mm -hmm. uh, we basically build a software product to let that, to do that. Um, and I think so, people are going to love your story listening to this. They just heard you, you did a deal at two to three X. So someone's listening right now in that space and goes, Oh, wait a second. That's doing 1.2. Well, no, it's doing what? 1.5 million in ARR. Mm -hmm. I would pay, I'd pay three X right now to buy that. Would you sell that too? Uh, you know, so I, I said earlier that we try to approach everything with the possibility that it may one day be sold. Um, at this point, we have no plans to sell it. Uh, it is something that we're having a lot of fun with, and it is our biggest money maker for sure. Now, that also means that you know it could negotiate the highest price. Yep. Um, and so, you know, we can. I can't say what the future holds for us at this point. We are building for the long term, and we are aiming for longevity. Yep. Well, which is one of the reasons why we sold our other product. Well, yes. Yeah, so, so you get um, again. You can't say the exact number, but two to three x fifty five thousand dollars a month in terms of AR. It sounds like something you know, it'd be something between one and two million bucks coming into the company. How do you decide where to invest in that for the long term? Like, what does that actually mean? Sure. So the first thing that we're uh, wanting to do after the sale is make sure that we still have profitability. So we operate on a model that we will always aim for profitability because that's the only thing that we can ensure that keeps the business alive. We are hundred percent bootstrapped self-funded business. We have no outside investment and we're all privately owned. Um, and so at that, uh, we typically aim for about the 20% profit margin. And when we sold off restricted content pro, that was basically the loss of that revenue was majority of our profit margin. So what we want to do at that point is operate for the next couple of months carefully um, but also very strategically to make sure that we can still maintain a monthly profit margin. You mm -hmm. know, we can, with enough cash in the bank, obviously we can take on losses for a few months, no problem. Uh, we can actually take it on for quite a few months, but we still want to reattain our month to month profit margin. So the first strategy is just, just pay attention, see where we are. Um, we, we don't have our numbers from uh, August yet, but we think we've already achieved that profitability margin again. Uh, and so then basically we get to decide if we want to make some strategic investments uh, for long-term growth, whether that is hiring or acquisition. Uh, we can choose to just sit on it and, you know, not really do anything, just have a nice cash cushion in the bank uh, or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. So on the $311,000 you did last month, what was profit margin on that? Was it totally wiped out? So you break even? Last month we incurred a loss, uh, but that's because we made some uh, significant investments that you know are ab abnormal expenses, if you will. Uh, this month I'm expecting we'll show a profit. Or, got it. Uh, the month of August. You got it. And you you think you go back up to twenty percent? I mean, obviously you're going to show a loss if you spent a bunch of the one to two million in investments right last month. But when the business normalizes, you think you'll be back at you know cranking ten, twenty, forty grand at the bottom line. I I think we'll see ten to twenty percent profit margin by the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. Very cool. And so let's keep going down the list because you, you said you had four products. Your big one is affiliate tool doing $115,000 a month. What's under that? Uh, Easy Digital Downloads, which is a e-commerce platform for selling digital products. And it does about 70,000. Interesting. Okay. And what's under that? Uh, WP Simple Pay, which is a simple e-commerce tool, basically allow 
uh, simple payments through stripe.com uh, for website or business owners. Uh, and it does about uh, 40 to 45,000. Okay. And that's the last one, right? Uh, nope. There's two others. Okay. Uh, so there's uh, sugar calendar, which is a small event, uh, event management tool, um, you know, for any kind of business that manages events, uh, whether it's just building an event calendar or you want to do event ticketing. Um, that's our newest product and it's still working on getting off the ground and it's about a thousand. Uh, and then we have another tool that is actually part of our other brands, which is uh, our payouts service. And this is our most uh, SaaS product, if you will. Everything else is more self-hosted. It's not exactly a, a software as a service, but more of a software product that we provide to you for your own systems. But we have a what's called the payout service, uh, which primarily at this point integrates with our affiliate marketing tool, Affiliate WP, that basically handles the payment processing for paying your affiliates. Mm -hmm. uh, and that one uh, is fluctuating a lot, uh, but uh, last month it did about 78,000. Okay, and what's, gross. what's the, it did 78,000 on gross on, on how much transaction volume? In terms of how many transactions? How much, I assume you take a percent of the payments that go through. So yeah, so basically 78,000 was the amount that we processed for other businesses and we take a 3% cut. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So, so at 3% after all fees. Yeah. So it's not 78, it's, it's 78 top line, but gross, Correct. gross revenue would actually be about $2,300, 3% of 78 Correct. grand. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So that one potentially obviously scales really nicely as you grow mm -hmm. volume, right? Um, right. Because that one, you know, with a traditional, uh, product or SaaS business, every customer you add on is about the same dollar. You know, if you have a 50, $50 a month plan, every customer adds $50 a month, uh, with a payout service like this, it all depends on what the business is doing that you bring right. on. So we could have one customer that does $50 a month in processing. We could have another one that does 50,000 a month in processing. Yeah. And so, you know, we could add five customers that, but that could potentially be the difference of 150,000. Yep. That's interesting. Okay. Can you, and can you break these down for me real quick in terms of customer counts? So how many customers on what affiliate WP.com? Uh, I'm going to have to give you ranges cause I don't have That's the numbers fine. in front of me. Uh, affiliate WP is around the, uh, I think 10 to 15,000 active customers at this point. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> so that is, if that's doing $130,000 per month, each, each person's paying what, like 10 bucks a month. No, we have it priced out. Uh, so our starting plan today is 149, uh, but they used to be down uh, to 49 a month was the lowest price. Uh, we've changed prices three times in the last uh, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have a lot of customers that used that are still grandfathered in. Uh, we used to also do annual renewal discounts. Uh, the earliest re renewal discounts were 40%, then we dropped it to 30%, then we dropped it to 20%, and now we don't have renewal discounts. But anybody who purchased before those were removed are grandfathered in. So our annual uh, customer value is between, I think the lowest right now is 34 up to um, 200, uh, 299 per okay. year. Okay, got it. Um, but if we take the cheapest you just said, right? Which was, mm -hmm. I think, sorry, you said 39? Uh, 30, 30, 34, 30. 30, 30, 30 $34.30. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Pretty yeah. So divide that by 12 and that gets you your monthly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh those are, those are, that's an annual value you just gave me. Got yeah, it. so everything, we don't do any monthly values. We do everything in annual. Got it. So, but so, okay, still even multiplying that, um, I guess the better question is of the 10 to 30, cause you've done so many pricing experiments, which is fine of the 10 to 13,000 customers you have, how many of them are still paying? Well, I guess you said you don't have any monthly. Um, they're all annual, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do any monthly billing. Got it. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. And then, um, what about easy digital downloads? Uh, that one off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Um, I could pull it up if you would like real quick though. Um, it's, a, it's, 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 so a, it's, it's a one-time running. cost. Well, so Easy Digital Downloads is a freemium product. So we have a free base product and then we have a lot of premium upgrades. And so one customer might have five different uh, premium upgrades. One customer might, might have one. One customer or one user might have zero. Uh, to date, affiliate, uh, sorry, Easy Digital Downloads is installed on somewhere between 50 and 75,000 websites. Mm -hmm. uh, and then each one of those users may or may not be a customer. I have 50 to 75,000 websites. It's great. And then what do we, what about WT, WP simple pay? Uh, WP simple pay is in the range of 
three to five. Hold on, I'll just tell you this one. If I can pull it up <laughs> real quick. <sighs> Numbers don't stick in my head super well. Yeah, no worries. So WP Simple Pay is one of is our small. It's not the smallest, but is the the second smallest after Restricted Content Pro, which we got rid of. Um, and it currently has uh 4300 active customers Interesting. okay so what they pay about 10 bucks a month on average um so just like our other ones it's all annual billing um our lowest price point at this at right now is uh 49 no uh 99 um and just like our other products we've gone through a series of price changes it's also a product that we acquired um, just about a year and a half ago. And the previous owner had also done a lot of different price changes and experiments. And so like affiliate OP, we have customers all over the board in terms of their, their, uh, their calculated monthly value. Yeah. Well, it's doing $540,000 annually at a $45,000 mm -hmm. a month, you know, a target right now, which means on average customers paying 125 bucks a year. Yeah. Yeah. Our tell me about, tell me about that. Price. You, you bought, you bought the company. How'd you uh -huh. find it? How'd you find it? And how'd you go through the process of, Hey, we should buy this. Sure. So, uh, it was originally started and owned by a guy named Phil Dirksen. Um, and he's a guy that I've known for a long time. Um, uh, I've been in the WordPress world, uh, and building software products for the WordPress platform for about 10 to 12 years. And Phil Dirksen was a guy that I got to know pretty early on just by going to conferences and, uh, and meeting each other there. Uh, and about two years ago, uh, it's funny. We actually had a, we had a podcast and we, we're doing a conversation about acquisitions and selling your product or buying other products. And literally right after that podcast episode was recorded, uh, he sent me an email and said, Hey, do you want to work together? I'd be interested in merging WP Simple Pay with Sandhills Development. So we started the conversation, took about six months of back and forth. Uh, and eventually we basically came to an agreement where he bought into the company uh, and his basically his selling uh, the price for WP Simple Pay was equity. So we gave him equity in the company and he gave us WP Simple Pay. Interesting. And how much revenue is WP simply doing when you, when you did this deal? Uh, it was doing about 22 to 24,000. Oh, wow. So you've doubled that year over year almost. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, okay. So you come up with a price point. Was it similar to your two to three X you mentioned earlier? Yes, it was. Okay. Interesting. So 24 K a month, obviously times 12 is what 300,000 per year at a high end two X. You're basically saying there's about a half million dollars worth of stock that instead of you guys yep. paying Phil, you just basically can, you agreed on a valuation of Sand Hill and you gave him that stock. That's correct. How do you structure that? For someone else, I want to copy that strategy. Do you give them the stock all up front or do you put them on a you know, one-year cliff, four-year vesting schedule sort of deal? So uh, that one, uh, at, for Sandals Development, we do have a vesting period for all owners. There are, there's five of us partners. Um, but with his, we actually considered his fully vested uh, because basically his value was the five to eight years of WP Simple Pay that he had run beforehand. And so we basically said, we have all of your history on this product. We're going to consider you fully vested when you come in. Yep. Yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. Talk to me about your team today. How many folks on the team? 26. And how many engineers? Uh, roughly 15. 15. And where's everybody based? Uh, so the majority of us are all in the United States, but we do also have uh, Nigeria, United Kingdom, and New Zealand. Let me pick one. Explain Nigeria. Sure. So one of our software developers there, uh, he primarily works on our affiliate WP product and payout service. Um, uh, he's based there in uh, Lagos. And we've, we've always operated as a fully distributed company. Uh, we're fully remote. Uh, and so we really don't care where you are, uh, you know, where you live or where you're traveling um, because everything's been remote from day one. That's great. Talk to me about churn, critical in a SaaS company. Let's just focus on one of your products to make mm -hmm. it easier, right? So let's just, or which, is there one you want to talk about churn? Uh, so I, I roughly uh, average these before we hopped on. and We do about okay. 4 to 5%. Okay, got it. Was it fairly average. consistent across each company or was one really high, one really low? Uh, they were all between 4 to 5. Well, oh, no, wow. one of them was a little bit higher. Uh, Sugar, Sugar Calendar was about 7%, mm -hmm. uh, which is our smallest product. But it's so much smaller than the others that I kind yeah. of ignored it from the mix. So 4 to 5% monthly revenue churn is about 48% in, on an annual basis. Is that accurate? Um, I'm not good with churn off the top of my head. Sorry, I guess the real question is that 4% number you just gave me, that's monthly churn, correct? Yes, according to right. Stripe it is. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. So then we can just multiply by 12 to get to that 48% number. Do, do you guys have a sort of a clear path to expanding a customer? In other words, upselling them from one product line to another or upgrading them on a feature set or things like that? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it depends on what the customer is. So there are some of our customers where up, upselling them to our other products makes perfect sense. So for example, if you are a WP Simple Pay or an Easy Digital Downloads or prior to the sale, a Restricted Content Pro customer, all of these are customers where you are running a business of some kind, you are taking money in, and it probably, at least for many of them, makes sense for you to have an affiliate program. And so we'll upsell you to Affiliate WP. If, however, you are an Affiliate WP customer and you are already running your store on, say, something like WooCommerce, upgrading you to Easy Digital Downloads doesn't make any sense because you already have the payment processing side of your business taken care of. Um, and then, so if we're going from any of our products besides the affiliate program, we'll upsell to Affiliate WP. If they are an Affiliate WP customer, then we upsell them to the payout service. How are you getting new customers for Affiliate WP and how many did you have last month? Um, we basically are a word of mouth and referral marketing. So we have quite a few, uh, sorry, not referral marketing, affiliate marketing. We have basically a pretty large list of affiliates that go out and promote us on their own blogs, um, especially in the inside of the WordPress world um, and the WooCommerce space. Um, we do some of our own uh, content marketing as well, but I would say the vast majority of it is either word of mouth or referral marketing. Okay, word of mouth or referral. So what's a good question to understand your affiliate program? So maybe this is the right question. Uh, last month, how many affiliates got paid at least $1? Of our own affiliate, like affiliates promoting our products or yes. using our payout service? Using your product, uh, like they're selling people into your products. Sure. Uh, one second and I can sure. probably tell you. So our, we don't, so our affiliate program, I'll be honest, is a little bit small, mm -hmm. but basically I would say we have on any given month, 15 to 20 people that earn at least a dollar. Okay. Yeah. But then we'll have about three to four that are doing the somewhere between 500 and $3,000. Okay. Got it. Four to five earn 500 to 3,000. Is that what you said? 3,000? Yes. Yeah. Well, and this would be specifically for our affiliate MP product. Yep. Yep. And, and so the one or two earning 3000 a month, that is what 30% of the, of the customers they help you sign. Uh, what's the pay? What pay? What do you pay out? Oh, we pay them 20%. 20%. Okay. Got it. So if you're paying someone three K in terms of affiliate commissions a month, that means we can multiply by five, right? So they, they've helped you get 15,000 in MRR. Yep. That's interesting. Really interesting. Okay. So that's your main go to market is the, are the affiliate. How do you find new affiliates? Uh, that's something that we've really never done up until now. Uh, okay. we are right now we're actually working on, a, uh, on affiliate strategies specifically to do that. Uh, in the past we have simply relied on our position inside of the community. So in the WordPress world, uh, there's a pretty strong community of bloggers and other people that do a lot of just affiliate marketing as that's their standard business. Um, and we've always been, um, I guess pretty well connected to all of them. Uh, I used to do a ton of speaking at conferences and meeting a lot of people. And so I know most of them face to face. Um, and so when we were originally building out new products, uh, that group of people were always interested in, uh, getting on and promoting our products. And so we still have that strong base of original affiliates and they're really the only ones that we, we really use, but we're looking at expanding into actually doing some, uh, some more intentional outreach. All right, Pippin, good stuff. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, favorite Berlin. business book? Uh, Small Giants by Bo Berlinham. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Jason Fried, Basecamp. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company besides one of your own? Uh, I have to say Stripe. I can't, I can't run my business without Stripe. I was going to say, you're updating, your, you're refreshing your Stripe <laughs> dashboard as we chat, which is great. Um, number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I stride it for eight. Okay, and situation, married, single kids? Uh, married, three kids. Oh, wow. Busy guy. How old are you? I am 31. 31. Last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Uh, that it's okay to slow down and not work 18 hours a day. So mm -hmm. I, tonight, today I sleep eight hours a day and I work, uh, eight hours a day or, or less sometimes, but I used to, you know, I would, I would do the grind. I would get up super early and I would work super late or I'd do all nighters and it led to a lot of burnout. And frankly, I think I could have avoided all of that and had, you know, an extra year of productivity if I just accepted and, and realized early on that, you know, it's okay to work an eight hour day. That's fine. I, 
What a story. Sand Hills Dev, a couple months ago, they were doing $360,000, $370,000 a month in revenue. Then they sold off one of their products, Restrict Content Pro, which is doing $55,000 a month. They sold it at a 2 to 3x multiple and are now using that cash to reinvest in their other four critical brands. The biggest one being AffiliateWP.com with ten to 13000 paying customers all on annual plans. They're doing $130,000 a month on that product. Easy digital downloads, another seventy k per month. Add it all up, they're doing about $311,000 a month in revenue right now with profitability to targets in the 20% range from with a very nimble, quick team, 26 folks on the team, 15 engineers, their main go to market strategy is in a, a 20% affiliate payout. So affiliates promote their products. That's how they grow. Pippin, thanks for taking us to the top. Absolutely. Thank you, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares backend dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.